Howdy, folks. Oh, tight fit. Widget Wallace from NeedCoffee.com here. Back again for another Way Homer review. Here's how it works for the uninitiated. I have just left the... Aha! I have just left the cinema. There I am. Uh, where I have seen a film. It's back over there. And uh, I'm going to tell you about that film on my way home because it's just quicker and easier that way. And today, we are here to talk about the Lone Ranger. <clears throat> okay, synopsis. Synopsis is this. We have uh, our hero, John Reed, who is a uh, lawyer and uh, a, a kind of a do-gooder type of straight-laced type of person, uh, as opposed to his brother Dan, uh, who is more of a rough-and-tumble Texas Ranger type of person. And um, John has returned home uh, to, his, uh, to his brother and his brother's wife. They apparently share a bit of a song with them. And uh, his brother's son. And in the midst of all of this stuff going on, uh, there is the arch criminal, uh, Butch Cavendish, who is a very bad man. And you can tell he's a very bad man because he's played by William Fitchner in crazy makeup um, that makes him look like, you know, Jonah Hex's cousin. And uh, so, anyway, so he is the bad guy, and we're thrust into the situation of uh, the bad guy basically getting away and causing. Havoc. Now, it's, it's obvious from the trailer and from everything that you would expect that there's going to be, well, I mean, you know this from the trailer, there's going to be a situation in which John finds himself left for dead, and uh, thanks to the influence of his, uh, his, his Indian slash Native American pal Tonto, uh, decides to put on a mask and assume an identity to let everyone think that he is still dead, and go and seek justice for all the wrongs that have been wronged, or something like that. And somewhere fitting into all of this is uh, basically an excuse to show off some really great old age makeup in a framing story that is absolutely pointless. I mean, we're, there's a synopsis, and there's trains, and there's, you know, greed, and there's, you know, cowboys and Indians fighting, and whatever else. And by, the, by Indian, of course, I mean Native American, because they're calling them Indians back then. So anyway. Um, well, let me just say this, to go ahead and cut through the suspense. I believe it's because the Green Hornet and Lone Ranger were, I believe, created by the same folks. You might notice that both of the characters' last names are Reed, and that's because they sort of set it up to where I think it's the Lone Ranger is the Green Hornet's great uncle or something like that? Something like that. But basically what you need to know is that um, the Reed family, betw between this and the Green Hornet, the Reed family has been royally screwed by Hollywood. Um, I mean, <clears throat> here's the deal. You've got, it's very obvious what they were trying to do, what Disney was trying to do with this, in trying to create a new franchise. Because they, they I mean, Pirates is still going strong for them. they got Pirates 5 in the works, right? But they're like, oh, we might as well, we've got Johnny Depp on, on Retainer, we might as well do something. And so, you know, you've got Gore Verbinski, who launched Pirates, and you have Johnny Depp, who, you know, was the heart and soul and swagger of Pirates. So, of course, uh, we can just do the Lone Ranger. And that's what they were hoping for. Part of the problem is this. <clears throat> I don't know about you, but the original, for me, the original Pirates of the Caribbean, the reason why I like that film so very much is because it's a fun movie. There's, there's, there's a bit of goofy, there's a bit of funny, there's a bit of action, there's a bit of... I mean, it's got zombie pirates, for God's sake. Right? But it's fun. It is, it is through and through fun. 
and it's hard. It, at no point is what I would call silly. I mean, there's silly bits in it, but it's 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 not excessively silly. It is not tedious, and it is certainly not dumb. Well, instead of something that is fun, you have in this film something that is silly, tedious, and dumb. Tedious in that the thing is like two and a half hours long. And like I said, this framing story, which they put in there of the older Tonto, uh, I mean, it's, it's in the opening bit, I and mean, it can't be spoilers if it's in the first two minutes. Um, apart from Johnny Depp looking awesome in that makeup, there's really no point to it whatsoever. So it's just excess time that you could have spent moving on to something else. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, this is another one of those films where the thing I was most worried about is the thing that sort of works the best. And what I was most worried about, honestly, was Johnny Depp as Tonto. Now, I like Johnny Depp. And Johnny Depp can do pretty much anything he puts his mind to, except sing the part of Sweeney Todd. Um, <clears throat> so, I was worried about that because on, I mean, on one hand, I mean, I, I like, I like blind casting, right? And certain things make sense, right? Ben Kingsley as the Mandarin in Iron Man 3 makes sense because you're not going to have the yellow menace version of the Mandarin in 2013. You're just not, so that's okay. And all the casting in Cloud Atlas, there was a point to it, so that's okay. But something sort of bugged me about the fact that you have Johnny Depp playing a Native American character. Something about that sort of rubbed me the wrong way. And I thought, well, I don't know, maybe he could pull it off. Now the good news is, he could pull it off. Because I thought it worked. <clears throat> and he wasn't so quirky himself. I mean, he was obviously trying to quirk past the badness of the script. But the thing that really, if anything, took away from his performance is that frickin' bird on his head. I mean, because, I don't know about you, but if you ever saw the TV movie version of Captain America, where he's running, and they actually have the wings on the side of his head, on the, you know, on, that they have in the comics, that they said very specifically wouldn't work in, like, Captain America and the Avengers now, you can't take him seriously, because they're flapping. They're about this big, and they're flapping while he's running. Well, there's sequences in this where, like, the wind's blowing and stuff like that, and I think that bird's about to take off of his head, okay? And I'm distracted by the fact that there's a bloody great bird on his head when I should be looking at Johnny Depp being Johnny Depp. Well, acting, being Tonto. I mean, he is being Tonto. Um, so I, I understand. I mean, I know what he was going for. I understand that was sort of his decision. I get what he was going for. And I see where they sort of worked that into the script because they sort of had to, because he's sort of like the star and the executive producer and the cash cow on it. But it just was really distracting. Now, <clears throat> here's my problem with the film as a whole. Apart from the fact that every single time there's not action happening, when there's those character moments, there's a lot of those and they clunk really, really hard. I mean, like, harder than most things I've seen in a long damn time, okay? You don't have to have all your heroes be like Batman and the Dark Knight, where they're just all serious and mm, glum and whatever else, right? That's not necessarily the case, okay? You don't have to have that. However, what is it between this and Green Hornet where the heroes have to be frickin' goofballs, okay? Why is that? Where, where did that happen? I mean, you know, even if you look at, like, Adam West's Batman, that was goofy. And, but it all fit. I mean, the whole 60s Batman universe was goofy. So it fit within the context of that, and at no point did you get the idea that Batman didn't know what he was doing being Goofy Batman. He at least knew how to be Goofy Batman in a Goofy Batman universe. Here you had Green Hornet screwing around, Seth Rogen, and you've got Army, Army Hammer. It's not his fault. He was great in the social network. Goofing around because he doesn't know what he's doing. And I'm like, 
Why, why is that? Why must, why must the heroes be incompetent? And if you want to know how seriously they take the Lone Ranger, and I'm not, again, I don't want to take it so seriously. It's not even like Batman, where I don't think there's a lot of people, and there may be some, but I'm saying for the most part, most people with the Lone Ranger are a blank slate. I mean, we know there was a movie previously, but none of us can remember it. I mean, I can't. Um, but here's how seriously you know that you're not taking the, the whole situation seriously at all to an excess when you've got a lot of horse-based humor, including dragging your hero's head through horse poop, okay? I'm like, really? I mean, I'm, I'm like, fun, give me some silly, give me a bit of goofy, give me a bit of whatever, have it a little balanced, but you're gonna drag the hero's head through horse manure. I mean, obviously for the six-year-olds in the audience, right? I guess. But it's, it's, it's sort of ridiculous. <clears throat> and, that's, and that's really the heart of the problem, is that it is not fun. It doesn't have the fun of pirates, and it doesn't take its... I mean, at least pirates felt balanced in that everything that was happening made sense in the sort of pirates verse, if you want to call it, um, of that. Just like the goofiness of the... Batman Goofy Verse. I mean, whatever Batman Goofy Verse sounds like it's oh, that's not what I mean. You know what I'm saying? It 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 fits. It all fits. But the problem is, you've got like a really great villain in, uh, vi villain, villain in William Fitchner, right? Okay. Tom Wilkinson's there. He's doing well as 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 well. I mean, so you got really good villains, okay? And then you've got goofball heroes. I mean, it's like how serious. Did you know how seriously you were? Did you were you all making the same film? You know, did you have did you have the same scripts? What's happening? So, I mean, and oh, and I will say this. Okay, I understand that you got to have the William Tell overture in there. Okay, that's all well and good, but for the love of God, why, why? Would you have the William Tell Overture start at the beginning of your finale big action sequence, and then I swear to God, it played without ceasing for 30 minutes. If you, you, by, if you see this film, you will never want to hear the William Tell Overture. If you like that piece of music, for the love of God, do not see this film, because you, the, you will want to punch a bunny in the face. That is how frustrated you will be at just hearing it on on a loop. It's literally like they just looped it. Oh my god. It was awful. That that only added to the tedium of the ending. Where you have, you know, not just one but two trains and and stuff and ladders and craziness. And it's just like this is just I'm you haven't earned this. This crazy finale, you haven't earned it. You have not built up the amount of absurdity points necessary that you can cash in like skee-ball tickets to win the spider ring that is my attention for this ending. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I am, I didn't, I wasn't expecting much because it just looked like it was going to be silly and over the top, but it looked like it could still be fun from the trailer, right? And really, that's, I'm, not, I'm fine, okay? Like I said, I have no investment in the Lone Ranger as a character or as a franchise. I'm like, give me something fun. But I was not having fun. Uh, you know, I think all of the character moments being clunkers was part of it. The fact that it was too long was part of it. The fact that you're just, I mean, that's a problem. When your character moments are clunkers, then you can't, you don't really, you're not invested in anything, because for the most part, they're so awful. You just go, how, how is it that you're still alive? Because if you talked like this in the Wild West, someone would shoot you on general principle. So, <clears throat> I, I mean, I'm, I'm frustrated and I am astounded at how bad the film is. There's very, very little to commend it. I mean, like I said, you had good villains, okay? You, uh, and, and Army Hammer, it's not his fault. 
just like I just like it wasn't Seth Rogen's fault that, of Green Hornet, not their fault. Ariana, I think, could have been a good Lone Ranger had they actually, you know, wanted to make a Lone Ranger film. Uh, instead of, I don't know, Blazing Saddles with more explosions? I have no idea. Um, so here's the deal. I'm giving it a half a cup. That's it. And that's a half cup for Johnny Depp's sake. Because he really does the best out of everybody, considering what he has to work with and is the only character with which I actually had some moments of fun. Even though he was... He corked it up just a little bit too much, but I don't think that was his fault. I think he was, you know, playing the Anthony Hopkins, she's the devil's concubine, waha card, and trying to just blow past bad material. So that is frustrating. I would say, if you like the Lone Ranger, if you are someone who is invested, you're going to want to rip your eyelashes off. Um, and if you're just going for, you know, a nice film of Explodo, there's, there's got to be something better on for Explodo at the box office still. I mean, go see Iron Man again. Or if you hated Iron Man, go see Man of Steel again. Go see something besides this. Or if you just like Westerns, let me tell you something. Stay at home, break out your copy of Silverado or Tombstone, and watch that instead. Okay? And then when this hits cable, you will thank me. And, no, but I will say one other thing. Thank you, Disney, for not releasing this in 3D. For some reason, I thought this was coming out in 3D. So thank you for not putting it out in 3D. You, can, you know they were tempted. I mean, you look at the trailer with all the stuff flying at you. You know they were tempted. Thank you for not just adding insult to injury. So there you go. A half a cup, and that's it. And that's for Johnny Depp, and that just shows there's no hard feelings about either Dark Shadows or Sweeney Todd. God love you. So, there you have it. That's another way Homer in the can. And I, feel, I, I almost feel bad, because there's all these summer tentpole films, and very few of them are any good, in my opinion. And, it's, and as always, if you disagree, Please come disagree with me in a civilized fashion, and let's talk about it. I would love to hear your take on it. And believe me, I go into these films wanting to like them. And if you like a film I don't, I envy you. Because why would I want to go into a film wanting to hate it unless it's a Sex of the City franchise film? And even that one surprised me a bit. But anyway, so there you go. Another way Homer in the can. Thank you so much for watching these things, uh, as I'm trying to not veer off the road here. Um, as always, if you enjoy these, uh, do me a favor. <clears throat> uh, as always, you know, we like needcoffee.com slash support, whatever. But the big, the big thing you could do for me is this. Choose two bits of social media, whatever they are. We all have at least 15, so choose whether it's Facebook or Twitter or StumbleUpon or Flipboard or Pinterest or whatever the hell it is, okay? Pick two of them and share this on those two. Really easy to do, either through YouTube or through the site. Just do that for me. I would consider it a personal favor as you spread the word about these things and more people watch them, which is good. Um, so anyway, uh, yes, I know there's a Pixar film I want to go see and another animated film that I'm looking forward to, so we're going to be catching up on those relatively shortly. Uh, but until then, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it, and we'll see you next time on The Way Home Reviews. Bye. You know that painting that uh, Johnny Depp got the inspiration for the makeup and the bird thing from? It's called I Am Crow. It occurs to me that somebody really needs to do a painting uh, as a parody of that in Johnny Depp with the makeup, but Crow T. Robot is on his head instead. If somebody could do that for me, I would really appreciate it, and so would all of humanity.